Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Talking With Our Traders, a Caesar Sportsbook original series. This is where we sit down with our very own Caesar Sportsbook traders and dive deep into everything NFL and college football. Whether you're looking for insider insights or just want to hear what the pros are thinking, you've come to the right place. Let's get into it. I'm your host, Cindy Edwards, and with me today, as always, is Craig Mucklow, Vice President of Trading here at Caesar Sportsbook. Hello there. And Joey Fiesel, head of football here at Caesars. Hello. All right, guys, let's dive into some college football. Uh, Joey, will Colorado make the college football playoff? I don't think they're going to make it because I think there's two teams standing in their way. This week, Texas Tech, which is a very talented team, and Kansas in two weeks. <clears throat> I said early in the season I thought Colorado was better than we thought. You know, I think it was like the the fake sharp opinion that they were going to be bad. Travis been lights out. Shadur's a good quarterback. But they lose one of those games at least uh, in the regular season, and BYU will be the Big 12 representative. See, the fake sharp said under five and a half, <laughs> and I'm eating humble pie. I, they would have to run the table, and they're going to have to get some help from those above them. Can I see it? No. Would it be fun to see them in it? Yes. Right. Yeah. I think we can all agree on that yeah. one. Uh, Joey, break down the current championship winner odds. So we got Ohio State plus 360 as a favorite, and I think it's warranted. Uh, a very deceiving box score against Penn State because they had the pick six early in the, in the game. <clears throat> If they make it to the Big Ten title game, which they should, with just Indiana standing in their way, they'll be close to a three-point favorite against Oregon, even though they lost to them previous. So they're the deserved favorite at this time. <clears throat> Georgia makes sense to be the second best here. Very talented team. Should make the playoff, uh, but they're in danger with that one Alabama loss with Tennessee and, of course, Old Miss standing in their way. Oregon, easy close to the Big Ten title game. Um, will likely be undefeated. Don't really have much competition left, but again, if it's Ohio State, they're going to be dogs in that matchup. And then if they don't get that one seed, then they're going to be have a, have a more difficult path for the playoff. Texas, still a very talented team, but, man, do they have a slate of tough games <laughs> coming up. Good defenses, Florida, Arkansas, Kentucky, Texas A&M to close out the season. We're going to find out if Texas is the real deal. That's why they're kind of hanging around at 5-1. to one. And finally, Miami, the U is finally back. I think Craig made this pick early on. Um, this team should easily close to the ACC title game, uh, and they'll be the three seed if they win the, the title game. So Cam Ward fighting for the Heisman. He likely has the most Heisman moments. It's right between him and Travis Hunter right now. Um, but th those are your top five going into uh, November. Yeah, he's getting the Heisman moments in primetime games. Yeah. Which helps. Right. Um, yeah, a lot of this now, the challenge of compiling the odds for the championship comes with you now get an, an idea of what the draw could look like. Mm -hmm. And who plays who, which has an effect on the on the odds as well. I mean, you've got the you've got like this group of four: Ohio State, Georgia, Oregon, and Texas that stand out shorter prices. Then you have this like twelve to fourteen to one range: Miami, Tennessee, Alabama. After that, it gets very muddy because of how some of the, mm -hmm. the right. conferences will play right. out. Um, so there will be a lot of volatility going for the next few weeks, especially with some of the games on the card this week. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you mentioned it a little bit, but can you dive deeper, Joey, into why Ohio State is the favorite? I think just top to bottom, they're the, probably the most talented team, and I really think okay. we look at the path of where they can get it, right? right. So yeah. if yeah. They're right. going to gonna be favorites against Oregon if they make the Big Ten title game with only Indiana standing in their way. Um, so that's really why they have the separation is because we expect them to get to the Big, Big Ten title game, be the favorite in there, if they're the favorite there, they're the one seed, they have the easiest path. Right. Okay, it makes sense to me. Um, does Penn State deserve to make the college football playoff if they don't beat anyone good? Well, you know, Penn State can only play what's the schedule in front of them. <laughs> if they go 11-1, and one, they'll certainly make the playoff. And the committee agrees. They, they gave them the number six. So if they went out, um, do I think they win the natty? No. They guys still got James Franklin at the helm and Drew, Drew Aller still at quarterback. So... They have done enough to get there, though. So, uh, yeah, they, they should make the playoff. I thought they got the ninth seed, but never mind. <laughs> it must be the eyesight. Um, look, Joe is correct. You can only beat what's in front of you. And yet yet again, here we go. We're having the same conversation near the end of the season where, oh, this team's beat nobody. Do they deserve to be in? Yeah, the inevitable it's, conversation. The, uh, it's just, this was supposed to fix all this. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, That's the, a good the, point. The, That's a good the point. good thing about this, though, is you get one of these bad teams in and they go, we deserve to be in, and they get absolutely blown, blown out of the water. Yeah. Yeah. And you go, shh, 
<laughs> oh, I love it. All right, Craig, what is your favorite week 11 game for the total to go under? We know you love unders. We call love this the unders. Craig special. Yeah. Uh, we are going Georgia Ole Miss under 55. Mm. Okay. Plagiarism, because one of the geniuses said it in the back room, but also there's weather as well, so I kind of agree with it. Yeah, that one scares me just because I think we're going to get to that one. But, uh, yeah, that's I went with Iowa State, Kansas. Going to be a boring game. Give yeah. the under 50. I like it. I okay. love boring games. Yeah. <laughs> do, do. You're the only one. Yeah. Um, favorite week 11 game for the total to go over, Joey? Uh, Clemson, Vought Tech, over 53 and a half. I think both of these defenses are overrated, and I think Clemson wants to put on a show after that tough loss last week. Sorry, Joey. Oh, it's no. Nevada, Boise State. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I know that's not going to be Nevada. And <laughs> it's not Nevada. Yeah. Right. I like it. Okay. Which team is on upset alert? Craig, you're on quite the pathway yes. here. You're. I mean, you're this, getting a lot of these. I've run out of blind squirrels. I've run, <laughs> run out of broken clocks. This what is what you can do is up. predict an upset. Yeah. So why don't you start I, us off? But this is not me. This is just <laughs> literally purely the math, something yeah. we worked on in the off season. Well, the math is math. And it's working. My opinion <laughs> sucks. Um, so, yeah, we got Syracuse again last week for the third yeah. time this year. Yeah. Um, the math gives two. And rumor has it you don't like one of them. So um, the one was BYU on upset alert. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're getting luckier than Kansas City yeah. Chiefs. Uh, but the selection's going to be Utah on upset alert against Fandy. I like it. It's three and yeah. a half, four. Yeah. Three and a half. Three and a half, yeah. Yeah. Joey, who you got? I alluded to it earlier. I think Colorado's on upset against the Red Raiders. I think this Texas team is being slept on, and I think they're mm -hmm. going to get it done. And I somehow found the uh, the cash window uh, last week with UCLA. I'll stop looking at yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they haven't been good. I think that was the first one where they actually got there. All right. Well, we will see. Let's get into some game previews. We have 11 Alabama, 14 LSU. Joey, break it down for us. Huge game for both these teams as one team is going to have a three losses. And the season's that's, over there. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, right. these these two teams, is the playoff committee going to want to try to find a way to get them in even with three losses? <laughs> Absolutely. Here we go. Because money talks. Um, <laughs> but the game is set out at Alabama minus three. Leaning towards the LSU side with them getting the minus 115 juice. I like LSU in this matchup, and I think they're going to get it done. There's been, just been a transition period for this Alabama team. Um, and since that second half of the Georgia game, they just haven't been the same. So it right. uh, was close to being my upset of the week, but I can't just bet against Alabama. So Yeah, it's hard. Uh, what about number two Georgia and number 16 Ole Miss? Another great SEC matchup, Old Miss. O old Miss. Old Miss looked like the real deal last week, which wouldn't expect considering it was it was a look-ahead spot, right? They're, they're playing Georgia this week, so you wouldn't think that they would outperform and beat Arkansas the way they did. Um, but Georgia flirted with uh, Florida early, too, but eventually won by two touchdowns. This game is going to be very good. Our, our My power ratings, our power ratings, uh, suggest Georgia has a bigger edge in this game, um, but I, I, I respect that it's only two and a half right now, I believe, um, because Old Miss has just looked like they've they've gotten better since their their loss a couple weeks back. Yeah, so, George, Georgia are only two and six against the spread and one or seven against the spread first half, and this is the only eighth time Old Miss have been a home dog in five years. Wow! Uh, but they're two and six straight up. Yeah. This this will be low scoring and ugly because that's Georgia's motto this year. Yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> this is your under game, right, Craig? Oh yeah. No, right. Yeah, yeah. We'll get into the Street weather later two. on. Um, let's get into some NFL. Any trade deadline moves worth mentioning? Uh, Lions made the move with Zadarius Smith mm -hmm. to kind of have that replacement for Hutch um, with the injury. Commanders get Marshawn Lattimore is big, and it tells me they're going to go for it, right? Because their secondary has been poor. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the Steelers finally get a wide receiver after months yeah. of speculation, but it's Mike Williams, so I, I don't know if it's... <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't have any not knowing, like, right. wow, good yeah. trade. Right. The NFL trade deadline is always a dud yeah. because Agreed. superstars don't right. move, very rare. And if there is a superstar moving, they've already gone. Um, so I had, rather than any worth mention, I had two head scratches. Mm -hmm. um, why were the Cowboys trading for a wide receiver? I know. Okay. Um, and the other one was the Jets don't want Mike Williams. So why did the Steelers pay a fifth round pick? Like, you're going to get him cheaper. Right. Like, yeah. It's almost like 
they gave into something that you know you're going to get for free anyway. Yeah. I think the, the, the trade deadline says to me is like, who's going for it? Yeah. Who's, who's going to make, who's going to like, Especially tell me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Big yeah. time. So it's, it was interesting to see Lions and Commanders like kind of going for like, we're, we're, we're going to try it this year. Especially the Commanders when we thought they were going to be bad. Right. It's yeah. a good point. And they've got that window now where he's still on a rookie contract. So right. If yeah. you're going to do it, now's the cheaper time to yeah. do it. Yeah. For sure. Um, does a Christian McCaffrey return move the Niners Super Bowl odds at all? No, not really. I mean, no. it, unless we see CMC get in there and he's the same old self, but he's been dealing with this Achilles all year, it, we, him going in doesn't mean, oh, he's the CMC of last year. So we really have to see, but I, I really, you know, we're waiting on that Niners win and it just doesn't come. Like we're <laughs> waiting for them to blow up and they just don't get there. So, yeah, I, I see Niners continuity trend down. And they were short enough already because everybody's expecting yeah. the comeback yeah. and the yeah. rest and getting healthy. So the bye week came at a great time for them. Um yeah, it's, it's the, the, they're short. Yeah. So you don't need to shorten them anymore just because of CMC. You have to see what CMC does until Joey picks them as a touchdown score. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, guys. Can the Chiefs go undefeated? I believe their current odds are plus 700. No. 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 They lose to Bo Nix, like I said, they were going to a couple yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, you think that's their only loss or you have – I think uh, maybe the Bills, maybe. I think the b- b- Bills is going to well, be This a is the look-ahead game. game. Yeah. Yeah. Before Big the time. Bills. Um, no. And, you know, the Bucks should have went for two on Monday I night. Know. I know. I agree. I agree. It's crazy. There were three teams this week didn't go for two. Seahawks, Patriots, Bucks, they all lost. Yeah. All were underdogs, all lost. And I don't understand why they don't just. You know you who would have gone ended on the for field. two? The Lions. And the Ravens. That's oh, why yeah, they're so the likable. Right. And the Ravens. They're so yeah. likable. Yeah. Um, so, look, you, you get. You're paid to win games and you're paid to win a Super Bowl, and you don't get to a Super Bowl if you don't win games. And sidetracking right now about Monday, the weather was awful. Yeah. Your probability of kicking the extra point is less. You've just got a gas defense. You've just gone down the field on them. Go for it. Right? Yeah. You've got all the momentum. Agreed. What else have you got to lose? You're playing the champs. And then now your probability, you've got to win the coin toss because once Mahomes gets the ball, it's yeah. like the yeah. Patriots. You saw Baker's focus. face. His right face when immediately. He was like, it we lost. Over. We lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. Just go for two. Yeah. No, look, like, they're, they're a toe tap away from a loss. They're yeah. a Bengals meltdown from a loss, and they're two terrible decisions from the NFC South from being losses. Yeah. They're six and two at best in my eyes. Yeah. Um, Lady Luck is on their side. Just hope it doesn't run out before February because you're going to need it. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I, what's worse, Mahomes loses time or they lose a game to the Bucks because it didn't look good when he pulled up. Right, uh, right. No, yeah. I know. Everyone was like, oh, there it is. There's yep. the season. Um, they did look better, though. Yeah. Their Who offense looked, I mean, looked better. D-Hop, Their defense D-Hop definitely looks, looks worse. like he's going to well, be that's, a that's the best trade of the yeah. trade. Yeah. 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 Trade dish dead. Yeah, trade dish dead. Matter. For sure. We'll get to him as well. Um, okay. Does Mike McCarthy survive the season? No, he'll be fired shortly. Well, Ooh. he's not going to be fired. He's, he's not going to be fired. Well, he's he's contract, right now. His contract expires, so they'll oh, just yeah. let him go on Black Monday. Right. Um, he'll be the first coach let go on Black Monday. Yeah. All right. Break down the current state of the NFC West. The wild, wild west. west. Um, what makes this race just so great is we have a true battle because the 49ers underperforming big time. Yeah. Rams and Cardinals overperforming. Um, so this is going to be a battle to the absolute very end. And I think CMC is going to give us the answer shortly of whether this is going one way or going the other way. Um, but, yeah, Cardinals and Rams, I, I can't figure out this Cardinals team to save my life. I'm always against them or for them, and I can't, I can't <laughs> catch it. I'm, so I'm just not going to be betting on Cardinals games anymore. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be fun towards this end of the season. And one of the divisions we did not see coming, it usually was a clear 49ers are probably going to run away with this, but that's not the case. Right. Yeah. I, I Rams look f- good. Until Monday. Um, <laughs> oh. I, have the f- <laughs> <laughs> um, I have the 49ers getting nine and a half wins. I have the rest of the field getting, eight to, to getting to eight wins. Um, the 49ers are getting healthy. They've just come off a bye week. Perfect timing. CMC will get back eventually. Our resident Seahawks fan in the building thinks that Gino's probably going to get benched at some stage, so they'll probably mail that in. Mm. Um, but the most important thing is there's seven divisional games left in this to go. So it'll be interesting to watch. Yeah, it's, uh, these close divisions are great to watch when there's divisional matchups. Yeah, absolutely. All right, favorite NFL Week 10 game for the total to go under, the Craig special. Craig, start us off. Uh, we're going bad weather. Patriots-Bears under 39. 
Um, yeah. Although the biggest difference on my numbers are the Chiefs and Broncos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I went with the Germany game. I couldn't find a good under that I liked this week, which hopefully that means there's going to be a lot of unders. Um, but yeah, Giants, Panthers, under 41 and a half. Oh, can you imagine if you paid all that money for that ticket and look what you've got? <laughs> oh my God, absolutely insane. Um, favorite week 10 game for the total to go over? Joey, start us off. I know what this is. <laughs> Do you remember the uh, Rams Chiefs Monday night game in 2018 when they scored 100 points? I traded it. That game live. Oh, it was supposed yeah. to be played in Mexico, wasn't it? Got yeah, moved. yeah, it got moved. To and like, uh, one down. of the reporters from this town that you know very well was actually doing a piece on uh, in play but trading. So he stood behind me watching it as there's just <laughs> going up and down. <laughs> it was crazy that game. Well, we get that game with less stakes. Rams Dolphins over fifty on Monday night. I like it. It's Craig. the Ravens Bengals. Right. Um, biggest difference in my numbers. Divisional games are 23 and 15 to the over this year, and four of the last first five Thursdays have gone over, which is not great for us. We're, we're yeah, holding our right. heads going, please don't. Yeah. Yep. All right. Pick an NFL upset. We almost got it last week. Very close. Should have got it. Should have gotten it. If we had one receiver, would have gotten it. Or a coach going for two. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this sounds really easy because favorites went 14 and 1 straight up last week. <laughs> yeah, they and nobody sure did. took the Panthers. Yeah, there was not any waste um, card. Straight up this year, favorites are 96 and 42, which is almost 70%. Wow. Yeah. Um, is that better than usual? or? It's on par. On par, okay. But the favorites went against the spread 10 and 5 last week, which is 66%, which, and that is above average. Um, the biggest difference in my numbers is Tampa upsetting the 49ers, but they've just played Monday. Got to travel all the way across, short week. And teams off a of Monday going road home are only two and four against the spread, so I left it alone. Mm. Um, I think I'm going the Steelers to upset the Commanders. Mm. The Commanders have beaten one team with a winning record. They've got Philadelphia on Thursday night, so they're going to have an eye on that, albeit Pittsburgh have Baltimore Sunday. Um, Jane Daniels has struggled against upper echelon defenses. Um, they got a fluky 18 points against the Bears. They couldn't get in the end zone until that yeah. last play. Yeah. Uh, they got 23 against Baltimore, and neither of those defenses compared to the Steelers. Yeah, I think this one could get out of hand early. I, and if Daniels is taking a beating, I probably you're not going to see him like Caleb Williams late in the game to avoid the injury because you, your game is Thursday, not against uh, an interconference division, yeah. uh, interconference game. Right. Joey? At Patriots against Bears, the Ooh. real rookie quarterback matchup <laughs> in this one. Um, yeah, I just think the Bears are just trending down. I think the Patriots are looking better. Like, they're they're gaining momentum, and then they're up and down. But there wasn't a lot. Like you said, there's been favorite, favorite, favorite. So yeah. that's the only one that caught my eye that would make sense to me. That Drake may play. Yeah. That's all I got to say. Um, all right, let's build your three-leg anytime touchdown score parlay. Craig, you're going to build one. Joey, you're going to build one. And we're going to see if one cashes. Craig, start us off. All right. If this hits, it'll pay better than the Melbourne Cup Superfector, which paid 700000 Uh Zach Ertz for Washington, Ray Davis for Buffalo, and Land McConkie for the Chargers. And happy birthday to all three. <laughs> happy birthday to all three. I went... All rookie quarterbacks to get in the end zone. Ooh. Drake I love May, that play. Caleb Williams, yeah. Bo Nix. It pays a lot because yeah. it goes to 60 to 1. <laughs> it pays a lot. I like it. And if you guys like either of these parlays at home, you can tell them on the Caesar Sportsbook app. Are you guys ready for some overreactions or not? Always. Well, always. Always. <laughs> Giants Panthers is the worst game of the season. No overreaction. <sighs> not an overreaction. I think it's a pretty <laughs> bad game. Thank Look. God, I'll just be able to sleep. <laughs> until, yeah. Why is it an overreaction, Greg? So on my ratings, it's not the worst matchup. <laughs> on my ratings, it's the, um, where was it? It's the Patriots, Panthers. But, oh, yeah, I, and yeah, then it's, true. It, it's up there. But actually, it's not up there, is it? It's down there. It's, so it, <laughs> it, it's, it's bottom five for sure. Yeah. Uh, right. And I feel so bad for the German fans. It's not a great advertisement for the game. Yeah, I think that's what escalates it, is it's an international game. Yeah, yeah, and it's poor But Germans you know the beauty is? If you're on the West Coast, you don't have to get up for that no. game unless you're in this industry. That's very so true. We'll, That's we'll very be up true. We'll be up. Sleep in. Yeah. Um, overreaction or not, the Chargers are contenders. Not an overreaction. I think they are. Um, they have an upwards battle to get the Super Bowl. Don't get me wrong. 
But I think Jim Harbaugh is just an absolute genius. He's transitioning now to a passing game when he was running for the first seven weeks. It was play action. Yeah. It's, he's just, I will never doubt a Harbaugh that can't get it done. So, yeah, <laughs> they're a contender. This was the easiest question of the week because all I wrote was, any team with a Harbaugh as coach will always be a contender. <laughs> all right, yeah. similar sentiment. Yeah. We believe in the Harbaugh's of the world. Um, overreaction or not, the Lions are the best team in the NFL. Not an overreaction. Not an overreaction. They get three yeah. teams at the top. The Lions, Ravens, Chiefs. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, the, the Lions now, they got their replacement for Hutch. He's not going to be Hutch. But that just yeah. shows, I mean, they, they, they just always, Dan Campbell always has his team fired up. They have the grit, the grit factor. So I, I think, I, I called them a Super Bowl a couple weeks back. I flipped from my Eagles. Um, and I'm sticking with it. I think this team's a real deal. Fair play to Tennessee. They're the first team to win coming off a game against the Lions. Yeah. They oh, they broke the curse. But they didn't cover the spread. They didn't cover. Patriots oh. covered. Um, yes, they're up there. Uh, but they're also the benefactors of a, the scheduling gods. So they've played seven of their, their eight games in a dome. They've got six of their eight remaining indoors. Their running game is set up for when Mother Nature hits, as it did at the weekend. Yeah. Um, so if they get home field advantage, they, they can run... They've got four easy games coming, so they'll be eleven and one. They get home field advantage. They're going to have every game indoors, yeah, because there's going to be an indoor Caesar Super Bowl Superdome. Yeah, Caesar mm. Superdome. And say that three times in a row. Okay. <laughs> but I did see a stat. I can't remember where I read it last night. It was um, Jared Goff's only played three games in the rain in his whole career. Yeah. Wow. That's a great stat. <laughs> yes. I loved it. I guess LA I don't know how Detroit. true. I didn't double yeah. check it, but. <laughs> Um, all right, overreaction or not, Jalen Hurts is a serious MVP contender. I believe his current odds are at plus 1,200. Yeah, overreaction. I think he's outside looking in. He has a chance, but he needs to put the Eagles to the top of the NFC to, to, to be in contention. A lot will go to next Thursday's game. Um, yeah. We both liked him at the start of the season because we liked the Eagles. But, you know, beating Saints, Browns, Giants, and Jags doesn't make that resume glow with distinction. No. Um, right now, it's a legit four horse race. It's Jackson, Allen, Goff, and Mahomes. Probably one of those two leave the pack when the Bills play the Chiefs. So if there's a blowout either way, right. throw that right. one out the window. But as we've said all along, this market is so volatile. You're an injury away. Mm -hmm. Hurts should have won it a couple of years ago, got injured. Um, so taking a short price is probably the one thing I never advise. So 12 to 1, they, they'd have to run the table. Yeah. yeah. Overreaction or not, DeAndre Hopkins is still a wide receiver one. He never was not a wide receiver yeah. one. He okay. just didn't have a quarterback who could get the ball within 20 yards of him. Yeah, I think it just depends on the team, right? The yeah. Chiefs, yes. On the Rams, no. I he don't think he's better than Puka or, or yeah, Cooper. Yeah, right. But, yeah, I think it wide receiver runs depends on the team, and he's looked like he's going to be good with this team. That was a hell of a catch. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Absolutely. Oh, and the, the worst one was the DB was waiting for the ball. And I know. you always taught go to the ball. Right. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's get into Craig's Weather Watch. Craig, what games are on Weather Watch this weekend? All three went under last week. Wow. And all three got the weather. So we are wet and windy. Beautiful cocktail. Uh, New England at Chicago. And then in the college, Iowa State at Kansas. And Temple at Tulane. I like and it. And you missed the two last night. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, didn't look didn't they look pretty beautiful. up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into some NFL game previews. Thursday night football, we have the Bengals versus the Ravens divisional matchup. Both teams want to win this one. Uh, Craig, break it down for us. Uh, for me, this is the game of the week. Yeah. Um, early money for the Bengals. Bengals have won five of the last six in Baltimore. The dog is seven and three against the spread in the last ten games between these two, with a split of the over or under. Uh, Bengals blew a 10-point lead late in the first game between the two. Uh, Ravens came all the way back. The Ravens seem to have figured out one of the questions that we had at the start of the year about Derrick Henry's, um, how good will Derrick Henry be yeah. in the Baltimore offense? And now they're going under centre more. And now they're utilising Derrick Henry in his best position, but also you've still got Lamar as the threat. Um, another thing I read about was that it's, this is their lowest amount out of shotgun since 2017, I think. Um, this gets interesting because the next three weeks, the Ravens, the Steelers, and the Bengals will play each other. The upset won't surprise me here because both quarterbacks are on fire 
Uh, so it seems like a lot of points. Home divisional favourites are seven and ten against the spread this year, but prime time home favourites are fourteen and seven against the spread. Mm. But in that six point range, five and twelve this year, all teams. Wow, Joey. Yeah, just a great game and. Like Craig alluded, is a scary factor for us being the bookmaker on that yeah. total because yeah. this would, could be a Rams. You know, yeah. this could be just both these offenses look just tremendous, and it's their offense that are better than their defense, which doesn't bode well for a total going under. Uh, but the six, yeah, again, it feels just too strong here in this divisional matchup. Um, so as much as I like the Ravens, I think it's too much points. I, I like the Bengals in this spot. I like it. All right, moving on. Let's preview Steelers Commanders. Uh, Craig, I believe you had this in your upset yeah. alerts. Do you want to start us off? Um, money for Steelers early. Uh, on paper, it's a great matchup. But I think both teams have got eyes on the following week, which is far more important. Right. Um, interesting. NFC are beating up on the AFC. So NFC... Uh, home team favourites. So this is completely contradictory to my this is an upset. NFC home favourites versus AFC teams are 13 and 3 straight up this year. Like it's dominance yeah. for the NFC. If you're travelling yeah. to the NFC from the AFC, um, 10 and 6 to the under, which might do us a favour. Um, and the commanders are a joint best 7 and 1 against the spread this year. Um, so everything contradicts my upset. Joey? Yeah, it's, I mean, who would have thought that before the season started this was going to be a good game or something right. going to break it down? <laughs> yeah, I That's very both these fair. teams combined the, for maybe one win. Yeah, <laughs> they, they are not those, those teams that we thought they were. Um, and this is going to be the interesting one for Jaden Daniels because he's got TJ Watt going to be chasing him around, which yeah. is going to make a big impact. That guy's not to mess around with. Um, but this is going to be a great game. And, you know, again, we have the look-ahead factor, so maybe it won't be as great as we think. But I'm, I'm still excited to see which of these teams show out that they're the real deal. Yeah, I made yeah. this pick them on my numbers. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's closer. I think it's closer than the, the line yeah. is now. Right. All right, next up we have Sunday Night Football, Lions-Texans. Joey, you're backing the Lions. Break it down. <clears throat> yeah, tremendous Sunday Night game shaping up. Uh, status and Nico is key. Right. Um, he's was supposed to be eligible to come back, but we haven't heard any news. Um, we saw the Texans against the Texans against the Jets, and without that that key wide receiver, Nico, one of the best wide receivers. So if he comes back, that's where this game gets interesting. Because when we look at the box score the fast, past few weeks for the Lions, the defense hasn't been that impressive. It really hasn't. Like it, it's deceiving on the box score, uh, but their offense has been the opposite. So right. um, we're going to see if Zadarius Smith can make a big impact uh, for this defense, and that really will show if this Lions team can make the deep run. Um, in January, uh, but they have the juice, they have the momentum. I, I can't doubt the Lions ever, so I won't be betting on this game. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the real key is Nico's status going into Sunday. Does the Texans roof retract? <laughs> I don't think so. No, I can't remember if did or not, but another indoor game for the Lions. Yeah, like the scheduling gods have been so they, good. They love them. Yeah. All right, come on. They had that outdoor game last week. So this they is get the, a break. This is the, yeah, uh, but that's it, the, that running game. Yeah, that's what you need. Yeah. You need yeah. a running game in those conditions. Um, Texans playing their final game against the NFC North. They're one and two against the NFC North. Now they get the cream of the crop in that division. Yeah. Um, the Lions, like the Commanders, seven one against the spread, league best. Um, this is only the fourth game where the NFC is a road favorite over the AFC, and the, there's another one this weekend, which is the Vikings at the Jags. Um, for me, I mean, the Lions now have a four-game stretch, Texans, Jags, Colts, Bears, so they could be 11-1 and one before the schedule gets really tough. Then we'll see how good the Lions are. Packers, Bills, 49ers, Vikings, four of the last five weeks. Um, the Texans need this more than the Lions do, that's for sure. Big time. Yeah. Right. Okay, guys, let's get into our weekly game picks. Uh, Joey, can you give everyone a status update? I'm at 13. You Cindy's, went 2-0 last week? You went 2-0 last well week. Well done. Uh, Cindy, 10? Correct. Craig, 6. Can't remember. I, I can't remember. Yeah. I went 2-0. You did go 2-0. Where are you standing, Craig? 6? 6. 6. All right. But okay. If everybody followed your two picks, you'd be up 24% to level units. Yeah. That's, That's impressive. Yeah, that's impressive. Yes. A lot of blind, yep. a lot of blind squirrels. Yeah, <laughs> I've stuck on that. <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay, Greg, start us off. What are your game picks of All the right. week? Doesn't take a genius. Bears under. 
because of the weather, it's supposed to be pretty poor and the field conditions. Right. And I'm going to stick with what worked last week. Let's go with the upset of the college in the week. So we'll go Vandy plus three and a half. I like it. Joey? I'm going to go with two totals, the, both both my overs. Like Vautech, Clemson over 53 and a half. And I really like that Rams-Dolphins game to be an absolute shootout, which I will be rooting against on Monday night. Like, so it's my team versus 50. your team. I think yeah. we need uh, another side we, bit. We might need another side of it. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, my college pick is going to be Cincinnati minus five, and staying with Cincinnati, I'm going to go Bengals-Ravens over. What is that total at right now? 53. 53. I know. All right, it guys. probably flies over. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. I know these, we're going to be rooting for the under, but... Got to go with my heart here. Room for 50 mile an hour wind first. <laughs> Load of rain. Yeah, big time. All right, guys. Anything to say before we end this week's episode? Good luck. Good luck. All yeah. right. Good luck and happy betting. Thank you for tuning in. Bye.